Welcome! Anna Lee Reed of Supermama Birth Services here and I've made this video for you guys today because I want to help explain and go through the different stages of development of your baby from week 1 all the way to week 40. We're going to look at the different sizes that the fetus or the embryo is at that time period compare it to fruit. We're going to see what organs are developing each week and we're also going to imagine that if we had a little window inside of the uterus to watch what baby's doing each week, what would we see? Let's go ahead and get started. Week one to week, the end of week two is called the pre-embryonic phase. So we have the pre-embryonic phase, the embryonic phase, and the fetal phase. And in the pre-embryonic phase, you can see here at the top there it's fertilization one week two week three week four five six seven eight nine and that's 12 down there at the bottom tiny 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 little cells and what's happening is the cells are replicating and dividing replicating and dividing so there's no differentiation of, you know, a heart, a lung, it's just cells growing. And that ball of cells called the morula and develops into what's called a blastocyst. That ball of cells travels down the uterus and it goes and it decides, picks a spot and it pushes into that spot and projects its little chorionic villi, they're like finger projections, and they stick onto a portion of your uterus and that's when implantation happens. This usually happens around seven to 10 days. Once implantation happens, shortly thereafter, about 10 to 14 days after that, um, that's when the different layers are separated in the cell and we start to see differentiation starting to happen. We now call this an embryo. That's week one and two. In week three, our embryo um, is about the size of a tiny seed. That is a chia seed, and that's about the size of the embryo in week three. In week three, the first system of the body that develops in the, in the embryo is actually the circulatory system. So the heart, the lung, um, the vessels of the heart, are going to start developing around week three. Also, the brain begins to develop around week three. Then we move on to week four. And week four, baby is about the size of a poppy seed. Now, we look at comparison of the poppy seed to the other chia seed. It's not a whole lot of growth, but Something is happening, right? So we have a poppy seed at week four. As I said, the circulatory system is the first system to just start developing. So at week four, we're actually already having a tiny, what's called a tubular heart, starting to beat. And this tubular heart isn't going to actually be picked up on an ultrasound. So if we were to look into the window of the uterus, we wouldn't be able to see it because again, it's the size of a poppy seed. I mean, it's tiny. How can we actually see that, right? But the heart is already beating at four weeks. So all the other systems are also starting to develop around four weeks, 28 days. Respiratory system is starting to develop. The digestive system is starting to develop. Actually, the stomach forms at that four week period already. And then the nervous system and the spinal cord um, also starts to develop as well. We get to week five, and in week five, baby is about the size of a peppercorn, or in Jamaica we use allspice, so that's what I have. <laughs> that's about the size of baby at week five. And in week five, the sexual organs are beginning to develop. Um, and the liver is beginning to grow very rapidly in week five. We still can't really detect a heartbeat if we were to look inside of the window because 
it's still a very small um, group of cells embryo. In week six, um, baby is about the size of a pomegranate seed. I don't have one with me. But a pomegranate seed is the size of baby and the adrenal glands are what begin to develop in week six. Now in a fetuses or an embryo, excuse me, the adrenal glands are actually quite large compared to ours in proportion to what the size of their body is and it's said to be about 10 to 20 times larger than an adult adrenal gland set and that's because the adrenal glands do so much in the fetus they have a lot of work to do and it will start to shrink back around one year of life but the adrenal glands have to help the placenta to produce estrogens because the placenta actually produces estrogens but there's a precursor to that hormone that is created by the adrenal glands the adrenal glands also help to influence the maturation of the liver the lungs and the epithelial lining of the digestive tract. So it's got a lot of work to do. Um, also in week six, the small intestines, the colon, the cecum all start to develop as well. So we said in week four, we've got a stomach. We jumped down to week six, and now we're starting to develop the small intestines and the colon. Um, the top lip has started to form and the oral um, and nasal cavities are also starting to form. I did neglect to mention that in this embryonic period, it's very important that we think about this. In the embryonic period, all of the cells are differentiating. They're finding their way, their pathway in life. So this cell is deciding, oh, I want to be a part of the cardiovascular system. The other cell is like, oh, okay, I want to be a part of the, go you know, the sexual organs. This one decides that it wants to be a part of the liver. And the organs are developing in that time period. So from the end of week two to the end of week eight, this time period. This is the time period that the feed embryo is most susceptible to abnormalities in growth and in structure development. So there's things called teratogens, and teratogens are any substance, drugs, medication, um, chemicals, or even viruses that are known to contribute to fetal um, abnormalities. And around that time period of embryonic growth is when the fetus is actually most in danger of um, having an abnormality that will be seen throughout its life. So take for instance in week six, as I said, the intestines are growing in the colon. If there was a chance that there's a hole in the intestine, it would happen in week six and that would be due to a teratogen. If we um, have a newborn with a cleft lip, most likely that teratogen affected its growth around week six. So we like to make sure that moms are very aware of their environment, the chemicals that they use in the home or where they are at work. And, you know, speak to myself or to your midwife and we can go over a list of things that might be harmful and are known to be teratogens that will affect your baby's growth around that time period. Also, your nutrition needs to be above par at this time period. You need to be taking your folic acid, your vitamin C, your iron, your B12s, all of that needs to be incorporated into your diet in a very extreme level around this time because this is the time that your baby is growing the most and it's differentiating and you want that brain development to be on par. You want the livers and the kidneys and you know it needs to be so if we were to look inside the beyond. window of the uterus at six weeks we would definitely see a heartbeat it will be a very small one again but the ultrasound can pick up the echo echo waves of the heartbeat so it would be picked up and an embryo would actually be visible now at six weeks now we're moving on to week seven and the embryo is about the size of a blueberry um, in week seven, we see the sexual organs beginning to differentiate even more. So again, if there's a teratogen that's going to affect 
the structure of the embryo in week seven it's going to affect the differentiation of the sexual organ so there can be confusions of male female parts around this time period um, the rectum and the anal canal are also being developed in week seven and if we were to look inside the window of the uterus we would see eyelids on the little embryo you're not going to see any concaveness of the eyeball because there's no eyeballs just the eyelids on the face and you'll see little arm buds sticking out of the embryo as well week seven um moving on to week eight our embryo is now the size of a little kidney bean and the organs that are developing in week eight are the finishing the development of the anal canal and the intestines and the fetus actually or the embryo excuse me can actually move now at week eight so the motor skills have been developed around week eight you're not going to feel the movement of baby at week eight because again it's the size of a kidney bean inside of your uterine mass you're not going to feel it but baby's actually already moving at week eight it's pretty amazing um if we were to look inside of the uterus we would see that those little arm buds that i spoke about in week seven now have um fingers so they're webbed at this point in time but you can see the development of fingers around week eight at the end of week eight we've now reached the end of the embryonic phase so now we're going into the fetal phase so we now call baby a fetus rather than an embryo at this point in time baby is the size of a little raspberry and the external genitalia are becoming more well developed at this time it's not suggested to try and do a gender scan at week nine because you're not going to see genitalia on a raspberry right but usually around week 12 is when you can attempt to determine what the external genitalia is in the fetus week 10 baby is now the size of a prune and if we look at the size of the 10 week fetus versus a nine week fetus it's pretty significant um the bladder sac is forming the kidneys are developing more and baby is actually starting to pee just a little bit but because the kidneys are more well developed and we now have a bladder to hold the urine baby is now peeing a little bit not the same kind of pee that we do but it is urine um, and we, if we were to look inside of the uterus, we would see little fingernails starting to grow on the fingers that I just spoke about. Um, the fingernails start to grow at the bottom of the nail bed, obviously, and it's not until about week 36 that the fingernails actually reach to the edge of the finger. But nevertheless, you can see that there are fingernails there. So we go to week 11 and week 12 and baby is now the size of a lime and the size of a plum. Um, in week 12, like I said, you can now see that the external genitalia is more developed. The size of a plum, if you think about it, you still don't really want to try and do a gender scan then because it's still going to be very small. but. A skilled technician can determine whether or not the genitalia are male or female. Um, you'll start seeing hair on your baby and you'll see that the skin of the um, uh, fetus is very pink and it looks very delicate, it's like thin. And you'll also see tiny little movements of the chest if you were to look inside of the window of the uterus around this time. Then we go to week 13, 14, and 15. And in week 13, baby is about the size of a lemon. And in week 15, baby is about the size of an apple. 
you can see there's quite a significant difference in the growth of a 13 week fetus and a 15 week fetus. That time period of growth is quite significant because it's a lot more rapid. You know, we're going from a raspberry and a prune to a lemon, right? So there's a lot of growth in this time period and the kidneys are now even more developed and baby is peeing a lot now. So there's lots of urine. As I said before, it's not the same urine that we excrete. Our urine excretions are waste products, right? But in a fetus, the waste is actually going to the placenta. The placenta is doing the waste exchange between mom and baby. The urine that the fetus produces actually is literally just fluid. It's practicing, you know, the kidneys flushing out the fluid in the body. Um, and if we were to look inside of the window, of the uterus at week 15 we would see that the lower limbs are more well developed at this point in time. Um, I haven't yet mentioned that in a fetus the development is actually from head to toe so it's called cephalocaudal development and what happens is because of the way the fetal circulation is set up the nutrient and oxygen rich blood that comes from the placenta to the fetal heart actually goes to the upper extremities first and then the leftovers kind of trickle down to the lower extremities so as you might have heard me say already okay the fingernails have already developed but the toenails won't develop until about week 18. we've already seen the arm buds earlier in week six but I'm not now talking about the lower limbs all the way until week 15. And that's because of the way that the circulation of a fetus just happens. In week 16, baby is now the size of an avocado. So we go from apple to avocado. It's a significant amount of growth, right? And in week 16, the cells that will form the enamel of the teeth start to form and the intestines of the fetus start collecting fetal poop. Fetal poop is what we call meconium. It's a greenish, blackish, tarry-like substance that you'll see baby poop out usually a couple minutes to an hour after the birth. and. Um, it actually starts collecting in the intestines all the way back in week 16 and we hope that it won't come out in uterus because we don't want baby to swallow that but it's actually there from week 16. Um, the kidneys are now fully developed and they actually look like what we expect kidneys to look at at this point in time and at week 16 gender scans are go so we get to find out whether or not it's a little girl or a little boy inside of mama. Um, the skin is still transparent, but the cool thing about looking at a scan week 16 is that you can see little blood vessels inside of your the fetus. So you'll see the skin, it's translucent, and then there's like little blood vessels that are visible. Um, and around week 16, you will definitely see fetal movement inside of the window in the uterus. Week 17, baby's about the size So now of we're at 18 to 20 weeks, and baby has grown from the size of a sweet potato to, sweet potato, to the size of a mango to the length of a banana. So at 16 weeks, we were at the size of an avocado, right? And now we're at the length of a banana at 18 to 20 weeks. 18 to 20 week period is also very important because this is the time period when surfactant is now being produced in the lungs. Um, surfactant is a protein that coats the little lung sacs, the alveoli in the lungs, and it allows the baby to be able to breathe outside of the uterus. Um, so around 18 to 20 weeks is when we start looking forward to getting past that marker where we have enough surfactant and the lungs are well enough um, developed 
to say, okay, baby's now viable outside of the lung. Like, baby will be able to survive, God forbid, outside of the lungs, right? Um, also, 18 to 20 weeks, the heartbeat is detectable through a betascope or a stethoscope. So, it's louder, it's stronger, it's bigger, it's more present. If we were to look inside of the window of the uterus at 18 to 20 weeks, we would see that baby is definitely moving. Obviously, by 20 weeks, even a first-time mama should be able to feel baby moving. We'll see baby moving, you'll feel baby moving, and it's going to be just a lovely experience for you. Baby is also going to be covered in lots of vernix in 18 to 20 weeks. And vernix is basically a white, creamy, it looks like a waxy substance when the, when the newborn is um, born. But what vernix does is basically it coats the body, body of the baby from head to toe and it protects the baby from the amniotic fluid inside of the uterine cavity. Um, cons you know, think about yourself being inside of the bathtub for two, three, four, five hours. It's kind of the same thing, you know, you get pruny, scaly, whatever the case may be. Baby needs to be protected from the amniotic fluid to protect it from being, you know, having shaping and hardening of the skin, um, and friction even against itself. So... That's what happens with the vernix. And then also the baby is gonna be coated with what's called lanugo. Lanugo is like hair, but it's like a very fine downy hair, like baby, baby, baby hair. And it covers the baby from head to toe as well. And at the end of week 18 and 20, you'll see that the toenails are now there. Again, that cephalocaudal development that I was telling you about. So now we're at week 20 to 24 of development and baby has grown to the size of a pomegranate, the size of a papaya, and the size of an eggplant. And baby weighs almost, can weigh between one and two pounds. Um, week 20 to 24 is important because this is the time that the lungs and alveoli are now almost sufficiently developed to say that baby is viable or will be able to survive outside of the lungs. So in the previous weeks, 18 to 20, we already talked about the surfactant starting to be produced and it's building up. And now in week 20 to 24, that development of the lungs and the capillaries are reaching their um, point of sufficiency in being able to function outside of the uterus. Um, the brain also is now looking like a mature brain and it's building auditory pathways. So now baby is being able to connect brain movements to hearing. Um, and you'll see in the next set of weeks that the inner ear canal is developing. So baby now will soon be able to actually hear and understand kind of to some you know some degree if we were to look inside of the window of the uterus between weeks 20 and 24 we would see a whole lot going on um, in this time period baby is now um, moving around a lot you're definitely feeling her kicking or him kicking and poking you we will actually see behavioral sleep patterns developing um, baby might decide at one time period he's going to sleep with little or no eye movements or limb movements and then in another time period he'll decide to sleep with you know small eye movements and limb movements which we call REM sleep. There will be periods that baby will be awake and just kind of chilling hanging out every now and then he'll maybe shift or move but He's awake, and then there's time periods that baby is just kicking and uh, moving and dancing in there, and just lots of vigorous movements. Um, baby's picking its favorite position in the uterus around this time. Um, your baby will start growing hair on its head. 
the eyelids and the eyes have completely formed at this point. They're not opening and closing yet, but you will see the concavity of the eyeballs. Um, baby's gonna have eyebrows and eyelashes and even will be able to grasp things. So we might see baby grasping things in the uterus around this time period. Um, you'll see chest movements. Um, they are not classified as breathing, even though, you know, it's practice breathing, but it's not breathing because breathing is actually that respiratory gas exchange, which is happening in the placenta still. So um, it's not actually breathing, but you, our respiration movements are happening in this time period if we were to look inside the window. So then we now go to week 25 to 27. As I said, baby is now able to survive potentially outside of the womb. So that's good. We have a baby that's about the size of an acorn squash. Cute little acorn squash. And then it goes to about the size of a zucchini and then, or the length of a zucchini and a cauliflower. In this time period, as I mentioned slightly before, the inner ear is developing and that inner ear contains the pieces of the ear that allow hearing. So if you remember the, the hammer, the stirrups, and the anvil are in that inner ear. So after this time period, baby can now decipher what you're saying. He can distinguish the voice of mama, daddy, brother, sister, um, because those auditory pathways have been connected and made and now baby can hear. So we'll see that. And then if we were to look inside, we were to see still those sleep patterns and movements, grasping of more items, maybe the umbilical cord, its own fingers, whatever. And baby might even decide to stick its tongue out at you. <laughs> then we go to week 28. A lot of things happen in week 28. There's lots of weight that's put on in week 28 the blood volume of mommy is going to increase and baby is almost at, at about two-thirds the size that it will be at full term um, baby weighs about two and a half pounds around this time as well and this is a significant moment for male fetuses because on week 28 the testes drop into the upper scrotum. Also in week 28, the eyelids begin to open and close. So we can now see the eyelids opening and closing of your baby. We move to week 32. And after week 32, baby starts gaining about a half a pound every week until birth. So around this time, we are in the shape of a large butternut squash. Butternut squashes are about maybe this much taller than the little acorn squashes, right? And then the size of a head of lettuce and a big old cabbage. Um, organs are already pretty much developed at this point. It's just a matter of the cells getting bigger and longer versus differentiating into what they're going to be. Um, the baby's fingernails and toenails are now grown out to the ends of the fingers or toes and the baby's starting to look a lot fuller because that subcutaneous fat is filling up the areas between the muscles and the tissue. We call it brown fat, but um, that's being laid down in these 32 to 34 week period. Um, then in 34 weeks, baby's about the size of a pineapple or a cantaloupe, and the lungs should be completely fully matured by then. Let me skip down to 36 weeks. Baby's about the size of a honeydew melon or a cantaloupe, and it's about five and a half, six and a half pounds around week 36. The skin starts to get start looking pale. The body is more full. The lanugo starts disappearing. The Vernix starts disappearing and the hair is growing. You can see that the hair is growing on the head. Also, 
um, if we were to look at the soles of the baby's feet and even the palms, we would see that creases are starting to develop. Um, something significant about that is that when we are looking to see the gestational age of the baby at birth, if we suspect the preterm baby, we'll look at the soles of the bottom of the feet because preterm babies don't have any creases in the soles at all. But as baby reaches terms, more creases start to form into the soles and that's one of the indicators. So that's at week 36. And then from week 38 to 40, we see baby growing more and more and baby gets to the size of big old pumpkin pumpkin and then the size of a watermelon um usually weighing around seven to nine pounds at around this time um the skin is more smooth and it's pink baby is fuller Burnix is usually only found like in the creases on the skin. Lanugo is completely almost gone. You only find it kind of on the shoulders and the upper back area. And you'll obviously see more creases again in the soles of the feet. And at this point in time, baby's almost completely filling up your uterus's space. So there you have it up to week 40 of fetal development.